Hello and welcome to the Meriwether Knitting Podcast. My name is Gabriella and I'm coming to you from my home in Germany where I'm so excited to chat with you today about knitting and crafting and all that I've been making the last couple of weeks. So I hope you'll get cozy and join me for a little while to chat about those things. If you are a new viewer, welcome. It's so lovely to have you. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. It's always wonderful to just be able to catch up together. I'd love to hear what you're working on. If you want to share it in the comments below, I always get so inspired to hear about what others are kind of working on and dreaming up, whether that be in knitting or sewing or any other craft or even just in the kitchen. I always say that, but I really mean it because I feel like that is one of my favorite places to be creative in my daily life. So yeah, I think I'm going to first share with you knitting, but before I do, I have to tell you, I've been so in love with sewing. Like I've fallen so crazily in love with sewing and it's not like I've sewn a ton of things. I made that one dress, which I shared, and now I am in the process of making my second dress. Oh, but I am just like bubbling over with inspiration and excitement and like plans about things I want to sew and garments I want to make. I think it's so exciting and so empowering and, and really a lot of fun to be able to kind of make your own clothes. Um, you know, obviously with knitting and with fiber arts, like, you know, like knitting, crochet, weaving, I guess as well, although I've never woven anything or spinning. That is one part of the garment making, um, you know, kind of, kind of, supporting your wardrobe with handmade pieces and often you know primary pieces like especially in the colder months I'm always wearing sweaters and cardigans and yeah pullovers and of course socks every day I've got a pair of hand knit socks on pretty much through the whole year except for when it's super super warm um and accessories and everything like that but adding a new kind of craft to the mix and a new, you know, making sewing garments has just been so much fun. So I've been thinking a lot about what it would mean for me to try to work towards like a primarily handmade wardrobe, um, like a wardrobe which is mostly made of pieces that I've created myself. And it's kind of like a crazy dream. I feel like it's a little bit like pie in the sky. I don't know if that's really gonna be something I can achieve or especially not right now at this stage in my life. Like. I definitely know that for me right now is like a little sewing phase, but I won't be able to sew forever because um, I'm expecting my baby and I feel like um, sitting in a sewing machine for like a couple of hours at a time isn't that possible with a fresh new baby. I know at least from my last baby experience and I mean anything's possible if you put your mind to it and figure it out, but I, I feel like right now is just the perfect time for me to invest in sewing and I'm just trying to make the most of it. So I know that, that a whole complete hand and mid wardrobe isn't going to happen, but I've been really trying to kind of plan out and dream up a little capsule spring summer wardrobe for myself and kind of start to get to work on it. And now that I have my second dress, I'm, I have a fabric for a third dress. I feel like if I had just like five dresses for the summer, that would be like my primary little capsule because I'm really into like minimalist kind of wardrobes, capsule wardrobes. And if you're not familiar with capsule wardrobes, they're basically, it's basically this concept where you have a limited number of items, a limited number of pieces, pieces that you very carefully curate and select that often kind of match each other and um, kind of are interchangeable. You can create lots of outfits with them but it is just a smaller number of pieces and then often like are very intentional pieces that you wear a lot, that you love, that um, you feel good in. Yeah, things like that. I first learned about capsule wardrobes when I read Lessons from Madame Chic by Jennifer L. Scott a long, long time ago. I think I was in high school. And when I read that, I really, really just wanted to kind of apply that to my life and um, pare down my clothes and just have a very, I just love the idea of having a few things that I loved that I felt like were good quality, that I chose carefully and that I could just wear through the season and then every season kind of switch it out, switch it up for just so many reasons. For the, for the reason of in the morning getting dressed, the simplicity of that, for the sustainability factor, 
and for the budget factor because in the end even if you invest in higher quality pieces if you have few a fewer of them they can last you seasons and seasons and years even and they also just you know they have they kind of make it worthwhile it's better than buying a ton of things you kind of don't like that much that you know maybe cheap maybe affordable but you don't get that wear out, out of them in the end if that you know kind of makes sense so all that to say i'm really into like trying to have a base like a really pared down wardrobe and being intentional about that and so i'm it's not like i'm thinking you know my whole entire wardrobe for the whole year would be handmade but i just think it's kind of it's really possible to for me i think to have primarily handmade summer wardrobe so that's a goal i'm kind of i kind of have, have simmering in my mind and who knows if it's going to really come to fruition um but it's kind of a long-term goal you know as i phase out pieces for my, you know, annual summer wardrobe that I don't wear that much, maybe trying to replace them with handmade pieces would be something I'd really like. And, um, you know, it doesn't have to be only handmade. I really like, you know, wearing like jean shorts or jeans in the spring and summer. And I know that people do make jeans and jean shorts themselves, but for my sewing skills at the moment, that seems very out of reach. So I'm mostly focusing on dresses and maybe tops. Maybe, you know, putting a couple hand-knit tops in that little, like, capsule. I just am really dreaming about it and loving just thinking about it. So, yeah, that's been kind of this crazy inspiration for me the last few weeks. I've been really excited about it. And so, if you are also interested in those kinds of things, let me know. I'd love to hear your input. I'd love to hear if you do keep a capsule wardrobe or if, you ever, if you've ever tried it. Um, I'd love to hear how it's been for you. But... Yeah, I guess I'll just get to the sewing and the knitting and the crafting now because I've, I've already talked for a few minutes. So, first things first. Okay, I will show you my sock project that I haven't shown for a while. Um, I haven't even made that much progress, but I'm almost done with this first sock. It, the toe, I'm almost done with the toe. I'm like halfway down the increases. But this is my Moon River sock pattern that I kind of dreamt up myself, um, inspired by this gorgeous, gorgeous colorway from Paper Crane Yarns. This is the Soleil colorway. Um, on her sock base. Ashley is the hand dyer behind Paper Crane Yarns and she's just lovely. She's so talented. She has stunning, stunning colorways, gorgeous yarn, and she's just like a lovely person. So you should check out her podcast as well. She's also a podcaster. If you haven't seen her already, I will of course link her in the show notes um, and in the cards. But this is the motif. This is the little Moon River mo motif and when it's worn it will of course stretch out a little bit. So it's kind of this round little kind of rippled um, reflection of a full moon, kind of like a full harvest moon in a river. That's kind of my, my inspiration behind these. And I really love them. I love the like round motif. Um, I feel like this has this really cool combination of being both like geometric and also organic and it's kind of balanced in that way. That's something I really like. Um, I just really like the way that it's turned out and I had to work quite a bit to figure out how I wanted the motif to look. That part you can't see, you can actually see some of my works and these were all like previous incarnations. Some I ripped back, some I kept to kind of just see and compare, but this is the final, the final one that it turned out to be. And now I'm at the toe and I've got some beautiful stitch markers here as well and it's just, yeah, I love this sock. and. The last year hasn't been a huge major sock year for me. I've gone through times in my life where I have knit socks like a fiend, just in love with obsessively knitting socks. But this year I haven't been feeling the sock vibe as much. And when I want to knit socks, I mostly want to knit interesting cabled socks, which is why this has been the project I've been reaching to whenever I kind of just feel the need to knit some socks. And I've been really loving this sock. So it's my favorite sock project. I have a different sock, which is also a work in progress, which is languishing far away somewhere else and it's just stuck in its sock and one day I'll return to it but for now this is my primary sock project and I'm, I'm loving it whenever I um, just feel like picking it up I do and I savor every stitch so those are my little moon river socks and the progress I've made so far not too much hopefully next time I have like the next one cast on at least but I'm just enjoying my knitting, not pushing myself to complete anything or I don't have any kind of like deadline for things. I do have that as like a little pattern I'd love to share because it's, I really love it. And I think, um, 
it would be fun to just have in a pattern form. It's really such a beautiful little motif. So I guess I'll show you my other work in progress that you've seen previously before I show you my new little cast on. And that is my ballerina, ballerina wrap top. I think it's the name of the pattern. It is by Two of Wands. I don't remember the designer's name, but I know her handle is Two of Wands. And um, the pattern is free on her blog, which is really lovely. It's a wonderful pattern. And it's also available for purchase on Ravelry as well, I think. So if you like a PDF, you can go and get it there. Otherwise, I've been working actually just off of her blog and it's been so wonderful because it's a really lovely intuitive pattern. I'm really enjoying it so much. And the pattern is originally written for, I think, DK weight yarn, but I'm knitting it with kind of a worsted yarn with smaller needles and a smaller size. And I think it's gonna work out. Right now, it looks like it's gonna work out. So I'm excited to see if and how it does. Um, but here's what I have. So I finished the body pretty much since we last spoke. I completed like all of the, mostly I, I finished the body. And um, the yarn I'm working with is the Wool of the Andes yarn from Knit Picks in the colorway Victorian, which is unfortunately discontinued. It's really a shame because this yarn is such a beautiful color, such a lovely shade. I love, love, love this colorway. I think it's so beautiful. And as I like, the more I look at it, the more I fall in love with it because I think this is going to be the perfect kind of transitional piece, but also, you know, I can wear it all winter, but it's lovely for, for autumn. It's kind of a pinkish, mauve raspberry, rosy tone, um, which is maybe a bit, you know, not always a, an autumn tone, but I feel like because it's kind of muted and, and a little bit on the darker side, it will be also lovely for autumn, as well as springtime. I think it's also a beautiful spring color. I really am excited about it. And I'm not yet decided, I have not yet decided on how long I want the sleeves to be. I'm thinking three quarter length, um, if not full, maybe ankle, like ankle wrist length, I'm not sure. But I feel like three quarter length would be really pretty for a little belly wrap top. The pattern originally has it as like a short sleeve top, but I'm into a little bit longer sleeves and because this is wool, I think that would also be nice, a little bit warmer. And um, I like that the gauge I've got is a bit denser than the original gauge because this is a little bit of heavier weight yarn. Um, I talked about that previously, but I like a little bit of a denser, a little bit more structural, structured gauge, usually with things like this. So I'm super excited. And now I'm knitting the I cord. There is like an I cord wrap and I'm knitting the I cord. The bind off is also an I cord bind off. And I have not yet decided if I want to do like the whole thing as an I cord or if I want to do like a little kind of a, not a cuff, but like a band, like a waistband in a different stitch or in some kind of ribbing or something um, because I've read and seen that the I-cord edge rolls up a little bit and I'm not sure if I like that. We'll have to see, but um, for now I'm just gonna keep it as it is and knit this little I-cord, it's all wrapped up around my <laughs> double pointed needles, but I am, you know, I'm knitting away on this and it's a lot of fun. It's the perfect thing to take along, this like mini little, um, I cord it probably can't take it along much longer because it knits up so quickly but um it's fun to just have this little I cord and take it and then just like knit 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 and watch it grow it's such a fun project to take along I really love it I feel like knitting I cord is so much fun so yeah that's my ballerina wrap top I am so enjoying this project and so excited to have it finished I think it's going to be a beautiful little piece and it'll get lots of wear I am just I, I said this before, but I kind of think it's going to be like the piece that is going to kind of zhuzh up my kind of loungewear or athleisure clothes. I don't really have actually any athleisure. I'm not really an athleisure person. I'm not a fan of wearing like sweatpants or um, like like athleisure clothes that much. I don't know why. I'm just not. It's just not my thing. But I really love to wear like in my pregnancy, late pregnancy, you know, I'm in the third trimester and I feel definitely like preg pregnancy. I have been wearing lots of leggings and I try to dress it up. Like right now I'm wearing this, like I have this silk top, which I got secondhand a lot, long time ago. And I feel like this like adds a little bit of something or I like to wear like button up tops or like blouses or little short dresses over leggings or over tights um, at the stage of pregnancy because I'm just like, or just dresses because I am so not in the mood to wear 
like like jeans or something um, or something structured I don't I don't want to wear structures and also not like super tight tights I don't want to wear super like tights either but I saw this whole beautiful board on Pinterest of this fashion this style and like the style inspiration called ballet core which is all like ballet ballerina inspired and my little sister was a real ballerina um she like worked up she had, was like she was a real almost professional ballerina but she stopped before she got to that point but she really like had the coolest she, just, it was, she it always looked so fun i always wanted to wear what she wore like even like the leg warmers i know that they have like a, a different name in the ballet world but, like little leg warmers over the tights and these little like dainty wrap skirts that they wore over their leotards and just looked so cute so in my mind i thought you know okay if i'm gonna wear loungewear i would love to wear like make it cute and i feel like a little ballerina wrap top is one way to make like loungewear or like leggings or something or yoga pants um a little bit cuter i don't know if that makes sense do you kind of know what i mean i feel like that would be it's an option so that is my second project already and my last third and final project that i have to share with you in the knitting realm is this new little mini cast on that I have on the needles and I shared my plans for this cast on last episode but this is my the little cardigan I'm knitting for the baby who's coming it's another little girl that we are expecting and um, I'm knitting this gorgeous little pattern which I will link in the show notes I don't remember the name of the pattern but it's also a wrap sweater <laughs> I'm really into wrapped things even then I sewed this um, wrap dress recently and I'm actually making another one. I'm just really into the wrap thing. I don't know what it is. I just love it. I love that like silhouette. I love that construction. Um, I guess in clothing, like garments that are sewn and also in knitting. So yeah, it's very funny. But I know for like a newborn, it's so nice to have a cardigan rather than a pullover or like a sweater that goes over the head because I remember their little heads just can't support themselves yet. And so it's nice to just be able to lay them down and then dress them that way. And so, um, I thought this little wrap looks so cute. And so I'm knitting it out of this stunning yarn from the November Woods Fiber Company, which is the company of Alexandra, another podcaster um, and just lovely person, lovely friend of mine here on YouTube. And this is her eucalyptus colorway on her Elm base. It's a DK weight base, a little bit of a heavier DK. And this colorway, I have said this before, and I'll probably continue saying it, it's, you can't even, you don't even know how beautiful it is. Like, you cannot tell through the camera how beautiful and nuanced and stunning it is because it is naturally dyed. All of the November Woods Fiber Company yarns are naturally dyed, and, um, yeah, it's just a beautiful, subtle green. It's like a very light, pale, beautiful green, and eucalyptus is really the perfect colorway because I think it really looks like eucalyptus, like that color that you would picture and imagine if when you hear eucalyptus. So yeah, this is, I think it's just so cute for a baby's cardigan. It's so like soft and gentle and just really nurturing for a little one. Um, and the yarn itself is really beautiful because it has this a little bit of like a rustic edge to it, but in no way scratchy, just very like robust and, and bouncy and beautiful. And so it's gonna be perfect for this fresh little baby and um yeah so this is what I have so far the back the back is almost finished I think I have like a couple of more rows left and then I'll go over and knit the rest but I'm really enjoying it so far it's all garter stitch super mindless super relaxing and so fun and so satisfying to see you know and to feel like this little baby sweater is growing I feel like I have to be honest one thing I have to say is that this pattern um is it's translated from German to English and I actually could maybe read the, English, the German one but I've very rarely knit from German patterns so it's a little bit more of like effort for me to try to read a German knitting pattern than an English one because I'm just used to the English so I chose the English one I downloaded it and um I'm pretty sure this pattern was not tech edited maybe I'm wrong but I think it's the I'm pretty sure it wasn't because there are like quite a few little errors which kind of tripped me up which were really simple but um it's not the most clear pattern in general which is also okay I totally get it um especially if it's being translated that makes sense but um for such a simple construction it's also not that big of a deal but it was a little bit confusing here and there and 
another knitter on Ravelry also mentioned that a certain part of the pattern had been a little confusing to them too. But it's a simple design, so I think in the end it'll all turn out okay, and I'm really excited about it, and I hope that it fits the baby. It's definitely gonna fit her. Um, if it's not her newborn size, I'm knitting the newborn size. If it doesn't fit her in the newborn stage, then that's okay too. She's gonna be born in the summertime, so um, she can wear it then a little bit later. And here in Germany, there are a few weeks that it's super, super warm, like super hot, but mostly, there are like cool evenings and other times where it's a little bit cooler. So I also know that she'll get use out of a little cardigan no matter the time of year. Um, if there's a couple weeks that she can't wear it because it's like 40 degrees, which I really highly doubt. Um, but actually probably could be. Last year it, was, it didn't get that hot, but the year before it got really, really warm. So yeah, then she'll just, we'll just wait. It's going to be okay. But it's always nice to have a little sweater. For a baby anyway so that's my what I'm working on and now I started to knit I just like when you see garter like just knit garter in the flat it's almost ir like irresistible like you have to pick up your needles and you have to like knit because it's just so simple and mindless especially if it's such a small piece like this you just want to continue and continue and I'm not usually a garter or stockinette person but this it's just so much fun so yeah that's my final knitting project and now I'm going to share with you my sewing and a little sewing project I have really quickly because I've just, like I said, I've been in love with it. It's been so much fun to sit down and sew and yeah, I haven't really, I've only cut up the pieces so I'll just show you a little bit. So I have this, I'll just show you so I can show you the fabric and then explain. I'm sewing this pattern which I think is called the Bluebell Wrap Dress. I will put a picture of it here so that you can see it. Um, I found it on Etsy, the design and I'm really excited about the design. I think it's beautiful. It's gonna be a stunning piece. And the construction seems really simple too for someone who's still a beginner, but it's beautiful and I, I'm really enjoying it. And so I got this fabric, which is a linen and cotton blend. And this is mostly what I'll just show you just so you can see the fabric and get an idea of it with the design. It's a linen cotton blend and um, it's pretty lightweight. It's really beautiful and I chose this colorway. This fabric was on like super sale. I got all the materials for this dress, except for the pattern, for under 15 euro, I think, which is just like crazy to me. I feel like so impressed by that. I, I really do. And I feel like it just feels so rewarding to be able to make um, a beautiful dress like this for under 15 euro. It's really, really cool especially this cotton and linen fabric. I just think it's super beautiful. And I usually wouldn't choose this color. I feel like this is not usually what I would choose, but I think for the spring and summer, it's kind of nice. Um, I love spending time outdoors at this time of year, mostly like when it's not like time to work or if the weather's like not torrentially raining, um, then I, me and my daughter or me and Nick or our little family, go out and meet friends or just go alone and spend time outdoors, you know, in the forest or just in nature, even just on a little balcony. And I feel like this is gonna be a nice practical dress for that. It's lightweight, it's breezy because of the beautiful fabric, um, but it also has these beautiful kind of like textures. I feel like I just really love the way the grain of this fabric looks. So yeah, I'm, I'm totally in love with it. It's super gorgeous and Okay, so I'm a, since I'm a beginner, I would love to hear from you experienced sewist, sewists, <laughs> seamstresses, um, tailors, um, your take on something. So I cut out the pieces and I, it was once recommended to me by a YouTuber, a YouTube video that um, when you're first starting out especially, it makes sense to like do the dig zigzag stitch or like clean up all of the edges before you sew the pieces together. Um, because it can kind of save you some trouble. And way back in the day when I once sewed a dress, I didn't, like, I didn't properly, like, zigzag all of the, the cut edges, and it frayed a lot, it made it really hard to sew, and so for my last project, and for this one too, I've been doing that. And I feel like it's the right choice because I feel a lot more secure now. Like, holding this piece, I feel a lot more, like, secure um, when I... I'm going to like like putting the pieces together and sewing them together but I don't know is there like a downside to that is there like a reason why one wouldn't want to do that 
Um, I noticed if you look at it, you maybe can't really tell there. Um, like on the bias, obviously, because this is like cut down, you can see a little bit more. It gives this like wavy effect. And here you can see it's also curved. So it has this little wavy effect. I don't know if that's bad. Um, I don't know if that's like <laughs> bad for the final product. It happened to my last project too. And I don't know if it's because I'm pulling too much on the fabric. I'm trying not to. But um, yeah, I'd love to hear if anyone knows why that is or if I'm just doing something wrong or if you have any advice for me, please let me know. This fabric itself was also, it was starting to fray really quickly and really easily. And that's another reason why I thought, okay, I'm just going to do it again. I'm going to clean up all the edges because I didn't want to risk it like fraying open as I tried to piece the project together. So yeah, I'm not so sure. Let me know um, if you have any advice or any take on that. You know, part of it, I, I would love to hear from you. But yeah, this is this is the pattern or the my next project and hopefully I can have it done soon. It's so crazy also how fast sewing goes compared to knitting. Like, you know, you just need a little afternoon and you can have half of a project done or a complete project done almost. It's crazy. And it's just like I've been taking it one step at a time and not overdoing it because I also have limited time. Mostly I do things like this when Esmeralda's sleeping or, um, yeah, mostly it's like when she's asleep, I do crafting and things like that when she's napping. So I have like just a couple of hours a day, but even still, I kind of think it's good that I brace myself and don't go too fast because I can definitely get too excited and um, maybe make mistakes or things like that. So yeah, that's my sewing. And the last thing I want to show you isn't really a sewing thing of my own, but it's a little project I'm also going to do, which I thought I'd just share with you. So I have this dress. This last couple of weeks, I've been going through all of our clothes. Um, like, I brought up all of our clothes out of storage that we store, like, off-season. and I've been getting rid of tons of things um, that we don't wear anymore, that don't look so good anymore, and just kind of cleaning out everything. And um, I found this dress, which I really love, and I wore a lot last season, last, like, springtime, spring-summer season. It's this kind of, like, little velvety dress. Allure, I don't even know what this is. Just this beautiful velvety dress. I love it. I love the color. I think it's so cute and princessy and beautiful. And um, like I just love it. I just wore it all the time. But I can't really wear it right now. And I don't think it's going to suit me after I've had the baby for a while. So I tried it on and I realized it could fit me with the belly if I just heightened the shoulders a little bit. And so I kind of like tested it out on myself and I think what I'm going to do in order to make this dress like workable for me is it has this like um, gathering here and then there's like this little part here and then it's the shoulder seam. And I'm thinking I'm just going to like, well what I tried when it was on is I just kind of like pulled it up and I think I'm just going to do that. I think I'm just going to hold that like here and sew it together here like with the shoulder, shoulder seam, this like ruched part and then it'll fit right over my belly. So I'm really excited about this, and this is a tiny thing. It's not such a big deal, but because I've just gotten more comfortable with the sewing machine and um, just like turning it on and using it, I feel like you could also hand sew that easily. But it really made me excited because I was almost like, ah, oh, I'm not gonna wear it for so long. I'm just gonna get rid of it. Like I'm just gonna donate it. But instead of donating it, I'm gonna try to make it workable. And then once I don't wear it anymore, then I can donate it or get rid of it. But I think it would just be so fun to um, to wear and to have. I think it's so pretty and feminine and like cute and it gives me this whole like this feeling of being like a princess when I wear it. So <laughs> you always want to have a little bit of like princess vibes or like mermaid. I always love like having some kind of a some kind of an essence when I get dressed, when I wear clothes. I just love that. So yeah. That is all I have to share with you today, making creative wise. I love that we can just catch up this way and I just love to hear again what you're up to, what you're making, what you're inspired by, um, how it is where you are, if it's also, you know, in the thick of springtime, late spring almost. I mean, technically not, I don't even know. But it's like really just this very springy time here or if you're going into autumn, if it's cool where you are. Um, I just love to hear about you and what you're up to. If you are interested in finding me other places, you can find me on Instagram as Meriwether Knitting. You can also find me on MeriwetherLiving.com where I will post the show notes for this video. I have blog posts and yeah, that's my website. 
Um, until next time, I usually record videos bi-weekly now. My last video came a little bit late because I had lots of technical difficulties, but hopefully that doesn't happen again. Mostly I'm pretty consistent with um, uploading bi-weekly. So yeah, I, thank you so much for watching. It's been so lovely to chat with you and I can't wait to see you again next time for more crafting conversation. Take care, bye.